Hey everybody, I'm Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring, and in this lesson, I'm gonna explain what it takes to get a 700 on the SAT math sections. This can be very hard to do for a lot of people, even if you're good at math, but if you can get a 700, that is an amazing score. You're gonna send it to every college, it's gonna make your application look amazing. So let's go over some things that you should memorize, some things you should strategize about, and I'll give you rough estimates of the number of questions you're allowed to get wrong to still get a 700, but, before we get into the memorization, make sure that you watch my video on the 600s. Make sure you know that you are consistently getting in the 600s in math, because if you are not, then don't jump ahead to this. There's some basic fundamental ideas that you do not know yet, and you need to have mastered those things first before we can move on to the advanced topics that we need for a 700. So don't skip ahead. Make sure you're getting 600 consistently. Then we can worry about things like the advanced quadratics, because if we don't know some of the basic quadratics, things like the vertex form formula for the uh, quadratic equation, things like that, then we can't use some of the more advanced vertex things like negative b over 2a. We can't understand the discriminant or the sum of the solutions formula. These are all things that don't come up on a lot of questions, but they can save you on some of the harder ones occasionally. And if you just don't memorize them, then yeah, you really don't have a chance of those questions. So this is a great place to start. Uh, a kind of more minor topic that can be helpful is the circle equation, uh, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Uh, I'm giving you that little freebie, but I do have a lesson on it, so make sure you go to my channel homepage to check that out. I'm also going to put some links in the description for this video, but this is just a checklist. I'm not going to teach you everything you need to know. That's on you, and it will take time to learn all these things, memorize them confidently, so you can get through them. Now, a slightly more conceptual thing, we need to understand how translations work, how functions can move around the xy plane. We need to be able to kind of work with functions and think about when they can be negative or positive or equal to zero. So that's kind of harder to, to quantify, but you just need to be comfortable with the way that equations behave. So that comes up from just normal practice. As you do practice tests, you will see a lot of questions about this, so get comfortable with those. Moving into geometry, now this matters more. There are not many geometry questions in the test. Many of them can be answered simply by using the formulas that they give to you in the reference chart, but now we need to move into formulas that you have to memorize. Things like surface area, trigonometry, sectors for circles. So all of these things are hard. They are not individually likely to come up, but together we do need them to master some of the hardest uh, SAT geometry questions. Similarly, we need to be comfortable with statistics ideas like standard deviation and margin of error. They don't come up very often, but when they do, if we don't know them, we're basically guaranteeing a wrong answer. So yes, there are still things to memorize on your way to a 700. If you're not getting in the 700s yet, if you're barely getting in the 600s, then these are not high priority topics. But if you have mastered all the basics, now you need to worry about these little minor things that could make the difference for a question getting it right or wrong. We also need to be very comfortable with strategies because it's not just about knowing math. I have tons of my students who are in AP calculus getting A's in that class who cannot break a 700 on the SAT because they're not thinking strategically about math. So one of the biggest strategies we need to use is the arithmetize strategy. I talk about this in one of my strategy series lesson videos. It is a great way to avoid algebra, to make a lot of conceptual questions much more realistic by using real numbers. So that's a general idea on the SAT as well. We want to avoid algebra as much as possible. And some of you who are good at math just cannot strategize this way. You, you're good at algebra, so you want to do it as much as you can, but it causes problems, and so we want to avoid it. Another way to avoid it is to get very, very good at using Desmos. We can use the sliders. We can use regressions. I have videos on these things to teach you how to do that, but those are very advanced ideas, but they can make a lot of advanced questions much, much easier because now the calculator takes on a burden of the work. And this may seem like an obvious strategy, but yeah, we want to maximize correct answers, and I think this also speaks to people who are normally very, very good at math and have trouble letting go or admitting that they are maybe not amazing at math. So, so let me talk about this and we'll, we'll get into this when we get to the number wrong as well. Basically, you need to be willing to sacrifice a few hard questions for the sake of making sure that you're getting all the easier, medium difficulty things right, and some of the hard ones that you actually understand. So some of you can't let this go. You're so fixated on getting to the end of that module and trying every single question that you end up making way more mistakes mistakes along the way than you should or you end up rushing through questions where if you just took a second to plug it into Desmos, you'd be able to get it right. So it's really important that you just get comfortable with sacrificing a few hard questions to make sure that everything else is right. You do not need to be perfect to get a 700. In fact, let's look at the numbers. Now, as always, this is just an estimate based on practice tests and experiments and things like that, but it's a pretty good estimate and a good goal to set for trying to get to a 700. On the way, we definitely wanna make sure we are in the hard module, and so 
we want to keep the errors to a minimum in the first module, my advice is just too wrong, right? So remember, the math modules are organized by difficulty, so we really want those two to be near the end of the first module where we know we have the hard questions. Even the first module is going to have some hard ones, and even though overall it's easier, so it's okay if we have some trouble with one or two of those, but really, if we can keep this to zero, that is the best case scenario. But yes, occasionally you just hit a topic where you have no idea how to solve the question, you just can't figure out the equation to write or whatever it may be, but that's okay. It's a, you've got a little bit of wiggle room there. And surprisingly, you also have a lot of wiggle room in the hard module. So we can get up to five wrong, that's seven wrong total, and still be in the 700s for the math section. That's, that's actually kind of a lot. And uh, it just goes to show you what I said before about maximizing correct answers. You can give up on five questions and still get an above, a way above average score. 700 is really impressive. So remember, they're, they're organized by difficulty, and we know that the hard questions kind of start around question 15, and then it goes to 22. So what is that? That's seven or eight hard questions on each module, on the hard module. So if you get five of them wrong, that seems like not so great, but that just means you have to get like three or four of them right to still be able to get a 700. So pick and choose which hard questions you do so that you have the best chance chance of maximizing correct answers. The most important thing though for getting a 700, no careless mistakes ever. Basically, you cannot get anything wrong because you misread the question, because you added wrong, multiplied wrong, lost a negative, anything like that is unforgivable. It's very hard to get a 700 if you're making even one careless mistake. A big reason for that, and this may surprise people, but the easy questions cost more points. Basically, what the SAT is doing is when you get an, uh, an easy question wrong, is it's saying you don't know how to do the easy version, and if we gave you a harder version, you would have gotten that wrong too, so we're going to hit you two times. So it's not like those are 20 points and all the hard ones are 10. It's not that simple, but just based on my experiments, yes, if you get easier questions wrong, it hurts more in your overall score. So careless mistakes are better to prevent, and a lot of you are going to have trouble with that idea because you really want to rush through those easy questions. You have as much time as possible in the hard ones. But if you make careless mistakes along the way, it's going to be worse for your score than if you had gotten one extra hard question right. So just remember that as you go through. If you have questions about that or anything I talked about in this video, make sure you put it in the comments. Also, make sure that you like and subscribe. I am constantly releasing new lessons and materials to help you get to 700 and beyond. So if you subscribe, you will know when all that stuff is available. Once again, I am Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring. And remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less. Sattel for more. Thanks for watching.